It's another illuminated oriental delight from eBay. And this one's different. It's a wall mounting fixture that has, it fires the light up the way and down the way, but I've got it sideways at the moment, just because uh, it's just easier to show you on the bench. And the interesting thing about this is it has barn doors to shape the beam like some theatrical fixtures have. And to show you this, I'm going to uh, take the exposure off. I'm going to turn the light off and then I'm going to lock it again. Now, if it looks harsh and sodium yellow, it's because the camera is set for the ambient, the sort of like the bench lighting, which is cold white. And that's making this fairly soft warm white look a bit harsh. But just ignore that and pretend it's a lovely soft golden white. In come the barn doors. Angle them in and you can create a nice sharply defined edge to that beam, just sideways, not uh, because it is going up and down the wall. It doesn't control the spill out the front. And likewise, the other side, because it's got a separate cob. That's another oddity, the cob. And you can basically, it, it's inefficient in the sense that it blocks light, but you know, it's a little power light anyway. And it means you can just have the light aimed exactly where you need it and get the spill out of people's eyes or off things that you don't want illuminated. It's quite a neat little light. It also makes me think of a certain Disney Imagineer who, when we were focusing lights, would, uh, if they'd got too many lights in a, a, a ride, they would uh, just find ways to use them by narrowing the output down to the point it was just a tiny little chink of light, just to basically uh, just use the light anyway, which was rather inefficient, but not to worry. Um, I wonder if any of you can guess who that was. I'm not going to say their name, though. That would be mean. They were cardful. I like them anyway. It doesn't really matter. It was just one of those things. However, let's bring the light back. Oh, tell you what. No, before I do this, let's bring the hobby in. <coughs> I'm guessing that those lights would almost certainly, because of the very little impact when it finally came to um, the lamp going out in them, it probably wouldn't be replaced. They might just unplug the fitting and say, well, it's not worth changing the lamp in that, which is good because then you'd have a spare fitting in the venue, which is good. So we've got a rather impressive, we've got 10 watt rating. So it's got two cobs and it's that, that's five watts per cob. Per factor is 0.5. That's just what you expect. It's a, one of the cheap electronic lamp supplies. Okay, let's bring the light back. So I'm going to take the exposure off. There's going to be a blast of light. Watch your eyes. It's back and then lock the exposure again. Maybe even lock the focus. I'm going to just get rid of this thing taking the bits now. So I'll just chuck the power out the way, get the hoppy out the way, which is probably flickering again now that the intensity of the light is up. And let's focus down onto here, because I was focused onto the bench before. Okay, right. So here is what the fitting looks like. It's got this metal cover that uh, sits down over this and it's got a little lip at the back for that. So really, the way it's mounting, you're supposed to make a big hole in the wall and stuff a terminal behind the wall or a proper junction box. But most of these things don't really, they've got such a small area to cover that, you know, it means you have to use a small junction box. But once you've got this in and there's the cob covered in glass with a piece of glass, uh, noting the alignment of this one isn't particularly impressive. Um, or that one, it's just they're kind of off center and it's eclipsing at the end. But uh, it's got these little barn doors over those to shape the beams. And then once uh, you've got this into position, before you shape it, this metal cover simply slides over like that and gets trapped between this lip and the wall. I'm going to have to uh, push those barn doors up the way I got that wrong way. And just sits down like that which makes it quite neat. It's uh, completely hidden and then you can shape the beam. Okay, let's take a closer look at what's inside this. Unusual to see the cobs. That is a five watt cob. That's uh, interesting. That's quite a lot of power. I don't see much. Well, I suppose the whole thing's made of aluminium, so it's going to, and even the, the barn doors are going to have some effect in dissipating some of that heat, but I don't see a thin dissipator, it's going to rely on the bulk of this and air flowing through the light to actually keep that cool. Now it does come with fixings and it comes with an Allen key. That almost invariably means that the fitting is going to be held on by little screws, little hidden screws at the side that will be covered by the fitting when uh, it's all installed and the covers on it. Uh, 
So the cover comes off. This is the bit that screws onto the wall. There is a generic power supply. There is an earth there. There is a little seal that couldn't be bothered putting on. Oh, the earth is loose. The earth is wobbly and loose. They've not tightened it up. That's assuming it can be tightened up. So many of these, the screw bottoms out before it's tight. And that's exactly what it is here. They've driven the screw in, but it's the, they could have done with a washer, or they could have done it with a shorter screw, or, or yeah, they could have done so many things there, but they've not. So what I'm seeing here is the red and black wire going down to the case. It's going to one cob, and then it's looping out to the next cob. So both the cobs are in series. And this thing says 240 milliamps at 40 to 80 volts, 12 to 24 watts. Uh, so 240 milliamps, let's bring the calculator in and try and work that out then. Uh, 10 watts. So, P equals I, V, V equals power divided by current. So the 10 watts divided by 240 milliamps, roughly, this is rough, 10 divided by 0.24 uh, gives a voltage of about 41 volts. That's roughly... Divide that by 2, that's the voltage across each cob, 20.8. Divide that by 3 volts per LED. Uh, it's about 6 or 7 uh, LEDs, either individual LEDs or pairs in parallel and then series. I'm trying to actually see down here. Let's uh, take a closer look. Let's get a wee bit close to this. I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12 chips in there going right up to the end. Uh, so that is six pairs of chips. Okay, and they're almost certainly the flip chip type LEDs that are basically soldered directly onto that. Can I get really into this anymore? Everything is kind of glued in there. I'll take that screw, I'll take those screws off the end. I don't think it's going to reveal an awful lot. Uh, it's also glued, but I can pretty much guess that those cobs might be screwed into the aluminum. The aluminum. Let's use a, a beefier screwdriver for this. I could even use the correct type. Maybe I won't, maybe I'll just use brute force and ignorance. It always wins. This is probably going to release the barn doors if this comes off because it is glued. Ugh. The glass is trapping that. But what I'm seeing here, I'm seeing silicon squirted down the end. Is that what's holding those cobs in place? It can't be. I kind of want the glass out now. You want the glass out too. Let's even get the glass out without breaking it. Although, to be honest, if we break it, it doesn't really matter. Oh, oh, it's fairly thick glass and it's siliconed in to the hilt. Very gooey silicon. Oh, let's see if I can cut myself. Oh, is that screwed in? Or is it just glued down? I can see what looks like thermal paste behind it. Let's put this bit back in here and touch that. Is It's glued in with uh, thermal adhesive. Okay. Oh, and it does. Uh, 6C2, so it is 6 in parallel. Uh, 6 in series with 2 in series. Any more information on this cob? Not really. It's got little holes, uh, little indents here, so it could have been screwed down, but they've not done that. Okay. What about the power supply? Can we take a closer look at this? Is this going to... It's potted, but, you know, we've had luck just uh, having t total disregard for uh, for the potting in the past. I could always change this. It strikes me that, you know, you could use this for other lights, but it's, most of these lights tend to be designed for the one-watt types of Luxian star-type LEDs. But this one is kind of really restricted to this use. But I got it first, take to bits, so we shall take it to bits. Let's uh, pull that out there. Let's see if I can get better access into this. Sometimes they use so little compound that uh, you can actually just basically slide this out. Or picket it to uh, the point that it basically just disintegrates. I shall picket it. Oh, it's not that bad, actually. 
This is either because they've loaded it up with something to help with thermal coupling, or because they've... Uh... Well, that's odd. Oh, no, I see what they've got. The wires were originally up into there, so it's not that odd. Oh, do you know what? I didn't check. Is this an isolated supply? Yeah, I could do that with the meter. I could put this to diode check test. Let's zoom out for this so there's more in the shot. I could put this to diode. Or I could, you know, I could just keep taking this to bits, but I didn't. And then I could measure onto the output. This uh, would involve multiple permutations here. Oh, that's not good. See when you get a display like that, it kind of suggests that this is a... You see that diode? That is a buck regulator, so it's not isolated. So that carbonate fills... Uh, well, may actually arc across and burn through sometimes through that fiberglass layer on top of the aluminium. And if the aluminium makes contact the metal, it will actually cause an earth leakage issue. That's what happens with some of these things. Let's continue ploughing into this then. I don't think there's going to be any surprises. I think it's going to be the sort of thing that we see on a regular basis, but just potted and put out of sight. So I shall just keep gouging at it. I could have paused while I gouged at it. Would that have been a good thing? I usually get complaints about uh, not showing everything when I do that. Okay. Here we go. It is wanting to slide out now. Let's see if I can slit myself in this thin metal. I'll just push out of this. Maybe not. It's just not wanting to part. Uh, the usual arrangement, they've got the a bit of a liner in here that's kind of glued in place. Sort of waxed, papery type stuff. Let's have a wee prod at that. Not really glued in, it's just a... Uh, the plasticised paper might be our description. That's more modern, isn't it, than waxed. Uh, and this? Is this capacitor holding a charge? No. Uh, what do we have then? We have the inductor and output. We have a little capacitor on the output. Yes, we do have a little capacitor there. I don't think that's a bootstrap capacitor as such. I don't think this is a high enough power thing. I'd guess it's probably going to be something like a, a bright power chip. I shall zoom down a little bit here because uh, that way you're going to see a bit more. So the bright power chip, or whatever it is, will be under the schmoo, as Abe says. Let's see if we can dig down. Well, there's the rectifier. Everything is just where it usually is in these things. This is very similar to another thing I took apart recently. I'm getting deja vu, but then again, most power supplies, I get deja vu because they're all more or less built around the same sort of idea. Well, there's the chip. By the look of it. Let's see if we can get a number off it. It's very, very compact. They've uh, squished everything into a very small space. That chip is almost right under the inductor. Right here. Let's see if we can get the last crumbs off that before I look at it with uh, a magnifier and try and see a number. My magnifier is steaming up with excitement. As it so often does, I should keep my fingers away from it. Oh, not easily seeing a number here. There is a number, but it's it's not easy to read. Tell you what, I'm just going to pause momentarily while I check this. Well, that was very hard to read. I ended up having to use just about every trick to actually find that. It's actually got three lines of text, but the main thing is, it is a BP2866B, which is a bright power chip. It's super minimal, minimalist. Let me just uh, zoom down on this and show you the circuitry. So if I zoom down this, it's going to lose a bit of resolution probably, and we'll stick this here. So um, have I got anything smaller to point? Yes, I have. I've got the screwdriver. Bridge rectifier. There's the bridge rectifier. Uh, smoothing capacitor. That's this big 400 volt 10 microfarad capacitor here. Uh, then it goes to the chip, and the chip is a centre resistor. In this case, they've got two centre resistors here. 
And I'm just spotting something else that is not showing that drawing. Uh, okay, there's another little sense resistor on here. But uh, they've got two 1.6 ohm resistors in parallel. That's the sort of sense winding sort of thing like that. Um, that sets the current. Then it's basically got the output diodes there. There's the smoothing capacitor. Uh, that's the sort of uh, the freewheel diode that uh, allows this to be operate very efficiently. And then it's the inductor. And the inductor is well braced onto the circuit board. It's got like uh, two pads at one side on one, two pins through one pad and then two at the other. So that is uh, more or less it. It's a very simple, it's a minimalist approach. That's an interesting light. The fact that it's using the cob strips is interesting. Suddenly I'm thinking about that Poundland light I took apart recently with the cob strips. Just going to brighten this up. Uh, I'm thinking of that Poundland light with the cob strips. You could actually rip this out, put in the Poundland cobs, and you could actually run the whole lot off batteries inside. That would be an interesting effect. Um, but interesting case. I like the way it goes together. I like the little barn doors. They're quite interesting. Oh, these are just clipped. Are they just clipped on? Or are they actually sat on? They might just actually be pushed over. And I think they're just clipped on, on though, and then the lot is put together. I don't think they're clipped on afterwards. I don't think they could, could they? This is where I hurt myself. This is where I hurt myself. Could they clip on? No, they, they have been sat onto that. It's just, they've got that open to make the extrusion easier. But there we go. Interesting stuff. It's an interesting light. It's in, it's in bits now. It's a fairly standard driver. It's the unusual to see the cobs and uh, protect it under the glass like that because it's got live connections, of course, because that's not an isolated supply. But, but a neat light. Yeah, that was worth taking to bits.